This is Pink Lou. It is 10-20-2020. Power of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. This is episode 144. Now, earlier today, we learned that the Department of Justice has filed their antitrust lawsuit against uh, Google, which, of course, is the parent company of YouTube. But what one of the stances that they, they say this is a deeply, or Google's response, this is a deeply flawed lawsuit. In fact, people can choose to use their platform, and thus, through the freedom, they are not responsible for being the number one search engine and the number two search engine on the, in the world, number one being Google, number two being YouTube. So what I'd like to do is point out here, as we know, October 15th was a big day in, uh, in social media history. October 15th was a major purge. Of course, we've seen purges before. This gave these, these um, in, in this particular case, YouTubers, a heads up that this could occur. But, um, and time to prepare, which we always appreciate time to prepare. But nonetheless, it was a shock at the boldness and the briskness of those who chose to share information that was released by the New York Times, they ended up being silent. There went the First Amendment right out the window, boldly and swiftly. So here, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube continue to poke the bear in, the, in just two weeks away from the 2020 presidential election. We saw this leading up to the 2016 election, but I really liken it to somebody that just got hit in the head and is kind of spinning with stars and, and little birds tweeting above them, for lack of a better word, just kind of dazed that, how could this happen? Somebody couldn't be that mean. It must have been an accident. There's going to be a good explanation for this. No, there's a saying that we learned as children. Everybody has a plan. If you don't have a plan, don't worry. Somebody else has a plan for you. And that's why marketing is a trillion dollar business. They want you. They want your data. They want your eyeballs. They want your ears. They want you. You mean money to them. So Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube continue to poke the bear. You, Google continues to manipulate algorithms. Amazon and Apple are smart enough to stay silent in this regard, but their time will come due too. So once again, this is Pink Lou, power of Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Episode 144. So I wanted to show this up at the top of the screen here. I'm on YouTube. And this channel, um, no matter what time of day or night my screen refreshes, this top ad space has been reserved for Trump for at least a week now. I'm not sure when it switched over. Honestly, I usually scroll down and don't pay attention. But it, it's really catching my notice now. The Trump campaign is going all the way to the wall, throttling through on one YouTube after another. Now, what's really interesting at this, any of us who started out early in technology would get really frustrated because if platforms tried to figure out how they'd advertise, they would run one article or one ad over and over and over and over and over. And it got to the point that you hated that company, not for drilling you in, reminding you to use it. So what I'm seeing here from the Trump campaign, they are, I don't even know how many different campaign videos they've created, both positive about the Trump family, positive about the First Lady, positive about Trump, positive about this, positive about that, and a mix of directing towards the opponent in the race. And it's not just one, it's many different scenarios and videos. They put a lot of money into the production and they put a lot of money into buying this key ad space. Now, why in the face of all the challenges that Trump has had with social media, is he giving him more money? And I mean lots of more money to buy this prime ad space. You know that through digital marketing arbitrage, there's many bidding for the space who don't even want it. They're just bidding to drive up the cost even more. And Trump's campaign is willing to write the check as evidence herein. So why would that be? Why aren't they just cutting off social media? Well, there's two main reasons. One is, of course, if they're not there, the opponent will be. But the second one is even more of an argument towards the DOJ antitrust claim. YouTube being the second largest search engine on the planet is powerful. 
this is where people are at. In fact, so many people have moved away from television and mainstream media and regular networks that this is where people turn to for the news. And, and so you've got to be in the space. Silence here would be just deafening at this point. As Trump continues to use Air Force One and Vice President uh, Pence continues to use Air Force Two, they're trying I'm sorry, they're traveling around from community to community and getting in front of the voter. Absolutely necessary. But this isn't new. Trump has had a pattern of getting out in front of people. And he's also had a pattern of using this platform. Now, again, so many complaints as Twitter on April 15th back, not only back what the efforts that YouTube did, which shows that all these companies are working in tandem and they work together to pull information, but YouTube even interviewed, in, intervened with individuals using DMs. Now, for those of you who don't tweet, a DM is a direct message. That is meant to be 100% private. And those who sent specified links regarding to the Biden, Hunter Biden laptop situation that came out on October 15th, found that they're, even the content of their tweets being deleted. At what level are they saying they're still just a platform? But anyways, that's not the point here. So in regards to the DOJ antitrust claim and Trump's constant battle with the media, why then is he still on Twitter? In fact, in 2018, he was sued and an, a judge stated that DT cannot remove people from his Twitter feed because of the First Amendment right, and they have a right to hear. And yet, Twitter has the right to remove Trump. So why is Trump standing for this? As one of the most powerful people on the planet, he continues to take a step back, allow people to continue to form their own trap and get themselves trapped in it or caught in it. And this is what we're seeing time and time again. Now, so once again, why is uh, Trump spending money in this, in this manner? So here in the middle of the screen, I saw this when I posted my um, article regarding the DOJ, Google antitrust, poke the bear and the bear poked back, is a tweet from Kaylee McEnany. And of course, this is the White House press secretary, although um, there's a question if she's still in that role. Uh, but here, as this looks like her, her it, it still says press sec here, but on the other one, it said former press secretary. So we're seeing what's going on with that. But anyways, uh, DT at the real, uh, real Donald Trump 38 minutes ago posted this. Now, why on Twitter? Because everybody's eyeballs are either on YouTube or Twitter. If you're not in that space, you're not communicating with the masses. He's either here or people don't hear him. So I'm using other platforms as well, Parler being one of them. But quite frankly, nobody's there yet. They haven't, they haven't gotten the masses that we need to to make the full transition. So Trump needs to be here. And he has chosen Twitter from day one in order to have the people hear his voice, his side of the story, his comments. As time and again, the story shifts between what the facts of an event, an actual event were, and a story shift to chase a narrative that has been filled with fantasy, fallacy, and redirect. So here, this is DT with a direct call out. I am pleased to inform you that for the sake of accuracy in reporting, there you go. I am considering posting my interview with Leslie Stahl of 60 Minutes prior to airtime. This will be done so that everybody can get a glimpse of what fake and biased interview is all about. Now, this is key. We've seen it specifically through, through our community over the last four years. Many will not give interviews anymore because although you might spend two, three hours going through phenomenal questions, giving a, a great, um, building rapport, thinking uh, awesome, those who have sat there and recorded the conversation themselves and put it out without editing are showing a completely different uh, truth than what is actually posted on 
on media. And so in this case, Donald Trump is stating openly that, hey, I did an interview with Leslie Stahl. I have every reason to believe that the editing will not be in my favor. And then in order to prevent this bias, I've recorded it on my own terms and I will release it. And let's just compare it side to side what the full unedited version is versus the edited version that 60 Minutes will talk about. This is a huge middle finger to mainstream media. They've consistently been against the president. They've consistently created their own narrative and kept with it. And they continue to make handshakes with movie industry, which we'll see where that goes, and social media as the, the frontier in this space. So kudos to BP and his team for coming up with this, for protecting himself, and also taking the time to fairly answer the questions, and more importantly, being able to get it out to, to the citizens here to see what he has to say. You know, there's one thing you can count on with Trump. You're going to know what's on his mind. There's not a big filter there. So whether we like it or not, we're going to hear what his thoughts are. Unlike other uh, candidates in, in many races, namely this one, what somebody says is defaulted to uh, what the audience wanted to hear or who were paying the bills. Or in the case of a debate, people still don't get it. A debate is not to tell the truth of what you have done, you will do, or what you're doing. A debate is to win, and to win at any cost. And this is what Kamala Harris shouted out as loud as she could, that it was just a debate. It didn't mean the truth. Well, unfortunately, millions of Americans sat and watched and listened to those debates, thinking that their, the answers would help decide which direction they would go when they went to the voting poll. Yes, it is something that we listen to. We spend our time putting in the effort to find out about the candidate and whether or not they choose to speak the truth when given the opportunity says a lot about how they're gonna lead their lives and how they're gonna lead this country. So once again, Trudeau's to, come to, to Trump and his team for um, a gotcha is essentially what happened. Now, one more click here. Trump hyperlocal strategy heads to Sinclair TV station network. And this is by Catherine Doyle, White House correspondent. And this was October 20th, so that is today. And again, this is a Washington Examiner. And this is posting again uh, President Trump's efforts to reach voters uh, where they are is increasingly strenuous campaign schedule are being augmented Tuesday with an appearance on Sinclair Broadcast Group which owns TV stations in scores of local markets. Trump will participate in Q&A session that will air on the network stations Wednesday, one day before the final debate between Trump and Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden. Now, as we have seen, the debates have been stacked and they have been stacked against the president. And just yesterday, um, the campaign lead, the campaign manager for the Donald Trump re-election campaign wrote a letter asking for just a little bit of fairness. And instead it was mocked once again, saying that Trump is looking to change the rules. No, for each debate, the rules and the rug has been torn out from under him. He's just trying to say, hey, look, we agreed to something. Let's at least stick to what we agreed to. So the big changes, of course, on Thursday, the topic for the debate, which has been the precedent for all presidential debating since they've implemented a debate strategy. And it's also what was agreed to between the Biden and the Trump, complaint, uh, Trump campaigns. However, because of the recent information that has come out against the Biden family, the Bidens have decided they do not want to discuss foreign policy, which we would be the crux of the crookedness which is going on. This also plays into foreign policy as related to the, the turmoil that the, the Trump family went through through the impeachment trials and also going back into the Clintons, the Russian dossier, and many other levels of corruption that we've seen. Right now, first and foremost, talking about foreign relations is of utmost importance. And kudos for BT not just walking in without saying, 
that um, he wants to stick with what's agreed to. Now I also have um, the confidence that because Trump is very good with his direction and questions, he doesn't dance around, he doesn't spin, he will answer directly, question being answered, and then quickly spin into the foreign relations conversation. So he will be, be able to bring it up. The difference is the debate moderator will not be directing this conversation and will not be requiring that both candidates speak to this. Another issue that came up late last night is just what Trump has said all along. Now, during the 2016 debate with Clinton, there was a moment at which somehow, by accident, Trump's microphone was shut off. And Trump, knowing that accidents like this do not happen, has said time and again, this will not be accepted for this debate going for the 2020 election cycle. However, yep, you guessed it, last night, the debate commission decided that an independent person, not elected by you or I, and probably not even disclosed to the public as to who this individual is, will decide who can talk, for how long they can talk, and when we've heard enough, the mics will be muted. Well, so much for freedom of speech. So as we go back here, yes, YouTube and Twitter are powerhouses. We must understand the power of what they bring to politics, the power of what we bring to our lives. And I keep narrowing it down to the finest dot, human resources. Human resources means people like you and I who are employees of these companies. You had better believe that if you're an employee in one of these companies, you're also being monitored. And life at these companies has certainly shifted since in 2018, May of 2018, Google took away the cultural contextual virtue of don't be evil. So this is Pink Blue, episode 144, power of Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, and why the Trump administration continues to pour time and money into ad campaigns and commentary on such sites.